Hello, and welcome back to another episode of You Are Not Your Diagnosis. Today's episode is a dive into the fascinating topic of our gut brain. So for some of you, this may be kind of a familiar concept. You may have heard the term gut brain and know a little bit about it. And for some of you, that might be completely new. So no matter where you are on that spectrum of knowledge and understanding, I hope that this episode gives you some cool insights into this part of our body and what it does and really what it means for our health. Because ultimately, that's what we're talking about here on You Are Not Your Diagnosis is understanding our bodies and ways to support our health and our well-being. So I think for a long time, intuitively, we've kind of known that we have this brain in our gut because we've used phrases in our society and in our culture like, I had a gut feeling or I knew in my gut that that was the right decision or that, you know, she wasn't a good person. So we use these expressions and they've been around for a long time because we're kind of referring to the fact that not all of our understanding and not all of our knowledge really comes from the brain in our head. And some of what the gut brain does actually is connected to kind of that intuition rather than intuition coming from the brain in our head, which is actually more like a computer. So I'm going to be talking about in this episode, you know, what all the gut brain does, the relationship between the brain and how they work together, but also how the gut brain is kind of its own independent center as a brain. So what makes it a brain? Let's start there. So the gut brain has over 500 million neurons in it, and it runs basically through the whole digestive system, all of these neurons. So it starts kind of with our mouth and our esophagus, runs down through stomach and the intestines and all the way down to the anus. And so there's those 500 million neurons, and then there's also four times as many glial cells. And glial cells are a type of cell that we also have in our brain. They support the neurons. So the gut brain, it works with the brain in the head, and it's partly controlled by our nervous system and the two branches, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. But it actually has a lot of independent nerves and independent functions, so it can actually operate a bit separately. So this is really fascinating as we're more and more able to understand this through science and research, you know, how this all works together. So let's start out just kind of looking at some of the different things that the gut brain does. So we actually make over half of the body's dopamine in our digestive system. So if you don't kind of know what dopamine is, it's a neurotransmitter and it's kind of known as the feel good transmitter, neurotransmitter. So it's one that encourages us to repeat certain behaviors that make us feel good. So this can be, you know, we, it encourages us to do things like exercise or follow through with healthy habits because we get dopamine as a result of doing those. And so we want to do more. Dopamine is actually also connected to addictive type of behaviors because we get that same rush of that neurotransmitter with certain addictive behaviors, like maybe um, drinking, uh, overeating, things like that. And we, again, crave more of it but it's a natural neurotransmitter in our body. And is, if we didn't have it, we probably wouldn't be as motivated. We wouldn't follow through and keep doing things that make us feel good in our lives. And then our gut also produces over 95% of the serotonin in our body. And that's most of it, right? And what is serotonin, if you're not familiar? Well, serotonin is kind of our happiness hormone. So it's you may be somewhat familiar with it because when you are depressed and you go on an antidepressant, there's a certain class that helps the body reuptake um, the serotonin in your body. So we actually make most of it in our digestive system, which is really fascinating because researchers are kind of studying this and they're realizing that if we have kind of issues with our digestive system and imbalances there and imbalances in the different cells and microbes, then we actually might not be making the serotonin and then the depression might actually be more based in the physiology of our gut than actually the brain um, creating the depression to begin with. So it's very fascinating to kind of see that certain issues are actually more based maybe in uh, imbalances and disruptions in our gut. 
So the gut brain also makes all of our digestive acids and enzymes and is in charge of the digestive process. So most of us are probably think of our digestive system as just kind of that is, you know, we break down our food, both with the chemicals of digestion and then the mechanism of kind of the peristalsis, the, the mushing of food through the digestive system through our muscles. So we think about that and we think that's usually what we think of when we think of our digestive system and our gut, but it does a lot more as we're talking about here in this episode. So another thing that your gut does is it monitors and reports on all of the gut microbes in your system. So if you didn't listen to the episode on kind of the microbiome, I'll put that in the, sh the link in the show notes. If you're not familiar with what a microbiome is, um, I'll give you a little definition. But if you want more understanding, I suggest you go back and listen to that particular episode because it's a little deeper dive. So microbiomes are just simply communities of good bacteria in the body. So for many years, we believed that all bacteria was bad. This was kind of the old paradigm of science, um, germ theory of disease, basically. And then recently, in kind of the past century, maybe even more like the past 40 to 50 years, we started to understand that not all bacteria is bad. There's actually good bacteria, and we are actually more good bacteria as a composition as a human being than we are human cells. So in terms of the gut brain, there's a monitoring of what's going on there. Are there enough good bacteria? Is there overgrowth of certain bacteria that shouldn't be there? Um, are there bacteria producing more harmful substances in the body? Uh, is there, are th what kind of other imbalances are there? And because the digestive system and the microbiome are heavily interconnected with the immune system, there's also a modulation of our immune function that happens because of this interaction with the gut microbiome. So when we have an overgrowth of certain types of bad bacteria, um, when there are certain types of bacteria that don't belong in that area, maybe they're not pathogens, but they're kind of in the wrong place and they can create inflammation, they can create a leakiness in our gut, which means that things that shouldn't be leaking out of our internal digestive tract are actually getting out into the rest of the body. And that's part of what creates a lot of inflammation. And I think I've talked more about that in a few other episodes as well. So it's all fascinating when we understand that there are all of these roles, that our digestive system is not just about breaking down and digesting our food, but it's also making neurotransmitters. It's also interacting with the microbiome and the immune system. And actually, there's a lot of study and research saying that more information, so there's a nerve in the body called the vagus nerve, and that nerve runs from the brain to the gut and to some other places as well. But here we're just going to focus on that connection that it creates between the brain and the gut. And more information is actually being sent from the gut brain up through the vagus nerve to the brain than the other way around. In fact, I think it's about 90% of the communication through the vagus nerve scientists are thinking goes that direction from the gut brain up. So more information is being communicated from your gut brain to your brain in this pathway than the other way around. Our gut brain can inform our mind and our brain and our head about how our, our state of mind is, how we are emotionally. So there's, I came across as I was getting ready to record today, an uh, interesting study talking about how our everyday emotional well-being might rely more on messages from that gut brain to the brain. So depression and anxiety, they're pointing to these, these kind of neuropsych, not neuropsychologists, but I can't remember what the term for the, this particular field is. It's a new field, basically studying kind of the neurobiology of the gut and how that affects psychology. Um, they're, they're pointing to the fact that maybe depression and anxiety actually are more originating in imbalances in our digestive system and our gut than the originating in our head. 
So that's really fascinating because if we're thinking about treating those types of issues, anxiety and depression, we can start to think about supporting the gut and the microbes there and all of the, the balances there instead of treating it kind of from that traditional perspective of it's in the brain, it's in the head, and we need to treat it from there. So the more we understand where things come from, right, the more we can actually resolve things at where they originate at the root. So, um, and in that same field that I was just reading about this morning, they were talking about how changing your gut bacterial balance can affect mental health. So again, some mental health issues, depression, anxiety, even some of the mental illness, there's, there's a pointing to through research that it could be that there's bad bacteria in the gut microbiome, that there's an overgrowth of certain strains of good bacteria, just general imbalances in that area can actually affect our mental health. So really, really fascinating. So I've just kind of given you a whole bunch of new knowledge, probably, maybe some of you know most of this, but for me, at least some parts of it were even new today. So that leads to the question then, okay, we, we have this connection between our gut and our brain, and we make all these neurotransmitters and hormones in our gut and monitors and interacts with the gut microbiome. So, so what do I do with all of this knowledge? So I think a lot of this really points to doing what we can to support our digestive system and to support our microbiome. So um, some of the different things we can do just from a nutritional perspective, and nutrition really isn't my area of expertise, but there are some th simple things we can think about in terms of how we're taking care of our digestive system with the foods that we eat. So you probably have heard, you know, about omega-3 fats and that they're important for a lot of different reasons. So those are fats that we get in like fish oils um, and different kinds of, I think, some of the seeds and nuts have them. Um, so studies in humans and animals show that those can increase good bacteria in your gut and reduce the uh, risk of brain disorders. So, you know, considering that and bringing that into your diet. Um, fermented foods are really beneficial for the bacteria and for your microbiome. And they've been shown to alter different brain activity. Um, eating high fiber foods is really important too. So whole grains, nuts, seeds, fruits, vegetables. And those all contain what are called prebiotics. So you may have heard of probiotics, but prebiotics are a little bit different. Prebiotics are just basically fibers that feed the gut bacteria. So we need a lot of plant mat matter and material for our gut microbiome to eat. That's what they feed off of. So if you're making sure you're eating a diet rich in those things, rather than like highly processed th um, foods, things that don't have a lot of nutrition because they've been processed, then you're feeding all of those good bacteria and making sure that they have what they need. So one study indicates that prebiotics can reduce stress hormones, things like cortisol in the body. So making sure just to think about that, and that's just great diet advice in general, and that we want to eat high fiber foods because they have a lot of nutrients for our bodies. Uh, another type of food that you can think about incorporating into your diet is called polyphenol rich foods. So I'll kind of list off some things that have polyphenols. Um, those include cocoa, green tea, olive oil, and coffee. And those are, polyphenol is basically a plant chemical that's digested by your gut bacteria and it can increase healthy gut bacteria and might help with things like brain cognition. And then the, the final suggestion in terms of just things that you can incorporate diet-wise um, thinking about something called tryptophan rich foods. So you may have heard of tryptophan when you um, think about eating turkey at Thanksgiving. Um, it's an amino acid that's converted into the neurotransmitter serotonin. So turkey, eggs, and cheese all have a lot of tryptophan. If you have enough of that kind of base building block, that can make serotonin. And since we just talked about how 95% of serotonin is made in your gut, 
then you're supporting your body and being able to make more of that happiness hormone. So that's kind of from a physiological standpoint, a little bit more understanding and knowledge about the science of the gut brain and what research is coming to show. Um, I want to just kind of finish by talking a little bit about coming back to where I started, which was talking about those expressions. I had a gut feeling, I knew in my gut. So we are a society that really has come to value the brain in our head over everything else. It's kind of become very glorified. And as part of that, we have come to have it do jobs that it's really not ideally designed to do. So uh, the brain in our head is more like a computer than anything else. It's designed to look at patterns and kind of run programs basically. So belief systems would be programs that get run through the brain. And when we think of having other brains, so we have the heart brain and the gut brain, and maybe at some point I'll do an episode a little bit on the heart brain, but since we're talking about the gut brains, what does the gut brain do kind of in the system of there being multiple brains? So the gut brain is partly about kind of discerning and determining what is us and what is not us. So that comes from that, again, that relationship with the microbiome and sensing, you know, are these good bacteria, are these really part of us? Because the good bacteria are really part of our body's composition, or is there something here that doesn't belong there? It's also discerning, you know, what is good based on what we've eaten. And if there's something that we've eaten that really we need to reject from our body. And, you know, if we've eaten something toxic or that's spoiled and we want to get that out of our system, that's part of what the gut brain does. But to come back to kind of that intuitive sense, that is actually one of the things that our gut brain can help us with is making certain types of decisions and really tuning in to more of that body sense of intuition, of just kind of knowing, is this the right choice? Like, am I really, am I making this decision based on past patterns? old belief systems, which is really kind of the head taking over and saying, you know, well, when you did that in the past, here's what happened, which is, can be helpful information. But sometimes if you've had this experience, I know I have, you're trying to make a positive change in your life and your brain is sabotaging you because it's showing you all of the times that, you know, well, that didn't work out for you last time, did it? And it will try and stop you from making the same mistakes. But sometimes you really thought it through. You really know this is the right choice for you. So the head brain is kind of going to guide us to stay where it's safe, to stay with kind of known patterns. But when we can drop more into our body and we can drop into that gut brain and that gut knowing, then it's really, really beneficial because that gives us access to a different way of understanding. And so kind of one of the other takeaways I hope you get from this episode is to start to value that input from your gut brain more and more and don't discount it when you're trying to sit with something and make an important decision in your life actually taking time and listening to your gut wisdom, to your gut knowing, to your intuition that comes through from there. Especially, it's not so much in relationship decisions. Relationship decisions should come more from the heart, but other types of decisions in life, really, we should be using that gut instinct and the gut intuition and knowing to help us make decisions. So just kind of to sum up how you might work with something like that, you know, you're trying to make a choice about um, something for your health, since this is a health-based uh, focused podcast. So you're trying to decide, you know, should I do this particular approach, this particular treatment, or try, you know, this particular modality, or should I do this? And so, of course, your head brain is going to want to jump in and list out all the pros and cons and do a lot of research. And, you know, if you want to go and do that to start out with and, and kind of have a basis of knowledge, that's okay. But to come back to making that final decision, kind of sitting with it and seeing, you know, how do you feel when you think about that in your gut? 
you know, we all know those, some of those gut feelings when we're excited, we get kind of that feeling of like butterflies when something feels wrong. Sometimes we feel that sinking feeling in the pit of our stomach. So getting familiar with those sensations, observing them as they come up and then starting to kind of use them to help you become more informed of like what, what is my intuition telling me in terms of, is this something I should follow or is this something that I should um, not follow? So just play with that and see what starts to happen as you kind of listen, because you're probably going to get wisdom and intuition from your whole body. But if you kind of focus really on the gut, that's kind of one center area where we can get that kind of inner knowing of like, oh, I have a bad feeling about this, that this isn't going to be a good thing. Or, oh, this feels like it's, it's a good thing. So an example, just to share a little bit of something from my own journey, um, a couple of years ago, actually, it's probably more than a couple of years ago now, uh, one of my doctors had wanted to put me on a different medication, like a newer medication for the blood disorder. And I just intuitively kept feeling like, no, this is not like everything has been stable. My body is doing well with everything that I'm doing. I didn't want to try something brand new or relatively brand new that just didn't feel right. I didn't feel like upsetting the apple cart. And I could have gone into listening to her explanations of all of the things and, and just gone from that scientific point of, well, you know, here are all of the research benefits of this. But intuitively, I kept hearing from my body, I do not want this medication. Like, I don't want to make this change. And when I've had several practitioners kind of tune in and test if that was kind of what my body really was saying, they were confirming the same thing, that that medication I might have had either a negative reaction to or it would have kind of upset the balance that I have created in my body. So that just comes back to listening to our own knowing and our own wisdom, which is one of the core messages really of the show too, is, you know, yes, someone may be pushing you and saying, here's the research, this is the next best thing. And you may just know for me, it's not the next best thing. So just learning to honor that and honor your body's wisdom and honor that kind of gut intuition, that gut knowing that, no, I don't want to go that route. And as I said, it's probably been thinking about it now, probably at least six years. And, you know, my health has just improved more through the work that I'm doing with my teacher and using the tools that I have. And I haven't changed anything medically. And my spleen was shrinking. And the doctor at one point kept saying, are you sure you're not, you know, we didn't agree to that new medication, right? Because she was kind of shocked that nothing had changed from what she was doing, but my body was improving. So following your body's wisdom is something that I always highly recommend. Your body knows what it needs to heal and your gut brain is part of that knowing. So learning to listen to it is going to benefit your health tremendously. And just to come back to kind of that nutrition support, really supporting the health of your microbes in your gut, the health of your gut brain through some just simple dietary type changes, probiotics in your food, you know, fermented foods, um, high fiber diet, things like that can really benefit your health and your well-being. And of course, if you want more specialized help in diet, then there are people that can help you. Like I had uh, Megan on in early December as a guest, and there's more work that can be done fine-tuning that. But those are just some general understandings and guidelines of how you can better support your gut brain which will support the overall health and well-being of your body and your mind. Because again, there's that strong connection between gut brain and the brain in our head. So again, thank you for taking the time to listen to today's episode. And until next time, I will see you in health.